Hi. Ever since I made two videos showing Half-Life 2 at extremely high and low tick rates, people have been asking me what a tick rate is and why extreme values cause so many issues, or just saying completely incorrect things about the way it works. I've also wished to make more technical videos for my channel, so this is a perfect opportunity to explain what a tick rate is. To answer your questions, I first need to explain what a tick is, and you won't fully understand ticks until you understand the issues with the alternatives. Computers and by extension video games don't work like the real world does in many ways. When playing a video game, the experience usually feels like an intuitive representation of reality. But the truth is, everything in a video game and your entire computer only occurs at intervals. A computer can only do one small step of a process at a time, no matter how fast it's doing it. Computers can't operate in a truly continuous fashion, but rather at intervals so fast they create an illusion of continuity. This is a problem for video games since most of them are attempting to emulate real life to some degree, something which we experience continuously, not in intervals. Early video games dealt with this problem by basically just not caring. A game would run its internal logic as fast as possible, for example moving characters around or progressing dialogue, and then once it knew what to display, it would do the necessary work to display the new state of the world which was dictated by the game's logic. For now, we can call this process a frame. Frames would keep happening in perpetuity, as fast as the hardware would allow. As computers became faster, they could process a game's logic and graphics faster, meaning they could do it more frequently, since the game was designed to simply let it do it as fast as possible. You can probably begin to see the problem with code that's as simple as, during this frame, if the player is pressing left, put them 5 pixels to the left. If your computer was twice as fast as your old one, everything would now occur twice as fast. Your character would move twice as fast, enemies would move twice as fast, and if the game had a day and night system, that would probably also be twice as fast. Now imagine trying to play such a game on 21st century hardware. It would be nigh impossible. When game developers realized this, they started thinking about how they could fix it. One thing was clear. If you know the hardware, you can plan accordingly. One solution was to just know specifically what hardware the game is running on. Apparently this was the idea in GoldenEye 007, a game that only released on the Nintendo 64. The Nintendo 64 was always going to be the Nintendo 64. The hardware was unlikely to ever significantly change. Consoles do get new models released over time, but they're usually nothing earth-shattering. Your game can't speed up if the hardware is too slow. Except it could. If you look down, the game would only have to display the ground and nothing else. Less time spent on graphics means game logic runs more frequently. The speedrunners of this game abuse this fact to get better times. Another solution was to outright limit the game's frame rate. Your game can't speed up if you say it's not allowed to. But it can still slow down, and with all the different hardware out there, consumers did not like having their FPS limited. The lower it is, the more choppy everything looks, and people like their games not choppy. I'm pretty sure this is the approach taken by many, many old games. You probably know at least a few. The first decent solution was something called delta timing. Let's go back to that small code example from before. Instead of moving 5 pixels, let's make it move 5 times dt. dt is a variable representing the duration of the current frame. Let's say the frame rate is 50. A single frame would last 0.02 seconds. Times that by 5, and now the player would move 0.1 pixels every frame, or 5 pixels per second. I admit I'm not too familiar with actual implementations of delta timing in actual games, but it's clear that the system is not perfect in many. In Grand Theft Auto 5 at high FPS, this car will slide along so far that it eventually causes a mission fail for no reason. Skyrim was developed by Bethesda. The FPS-related quirks of Spyro Reignited Trilogy, like being able to jump higher on lower FPS, caused speedrunners to create a rule that your game can only be set between 30 and 60 FPS for runs. Did you know that I like speedruns? There was one other idea, which is what Valve did. Now, I don't mean to imply that Source is the first or only game engine to do this. Somebody had surely thought of this before, and I just don't know them. Anyway, Source just says, why run game logic strictly on every frame anyway? Source mostly decouples the two steps, game logic and graphics, that other game engines always do one after the other. A single step in graphics is still called a frame, and a single step in game logic is called a tick, or in some places a game frame, but we'll stick with tick for clarity. 
Frames are allowed to occur as often as possible, and ticks are scheduled to occur at regular controlled intervals. The frequency of the ticks is what a tick rate is. Half-Life 2's normal tick rate is 66, and in my two videos I set it to 11 and 400. Source still in a way does delta timing, except with DT being reliant on ticks instead of frames. That's why a decent amount of the game still functioned properly. It's why I didn't move slowly in the 11 tick video, for instance. So now you might be wondering, if GameLogic was only running 11 times per second in this video, why didn't we see it in 11 FPS? I'm glad you hypothetically asked that hypothetical viewer. The answer is called interpolation. When a frame is ready to happen before the next tick is finished, instead of just continuing to render the world how it looked at the last tick, it creates an in-between image using the next tick. Now you may notice that that doesn't make sense. How can it see into the future? It does that by actually showing you everything slightly in the past. What you see happening is a fraction of a second behind the actual state of the game. You may also wonder about the opposite. How is the game managing to run at 400 ticks per second when my FPS is far lower? The answer is fairly simple. It just processes multiple ticks per frame. It's a bit more complex than that, but we should move on because this video still has not answered the big question it was meant to answer. The exact code information is publicly available online in certain places, but I won't show it here for legal reasons. Instead, I'll post a link to an online guide that does roughly the same thing that Source does. So now you hopefully understand why ticks exist and why they're generally a sound system. Now we may talk about what makes extreme high and low tick rates give such odd results. It can be summed up in one word. Assumptions. When programming stuff, Valve made assumptions here and there about what the tick rate would be. Just like all those other programmers before made assumptions about what the frame rate would be. Valve wrote code assuming the tick rate would always be 66, or at least that it wouldn't be something unreasonable like 400. For most of the bugs I showed in my videos, I don't imagine I'd have any luck tracking down specifically where the code went wrong, but I can do that for at least one instance. The airboat gun. The gun fired very slowly in the 11 tick video and very quickly in the 400 tick video. The airboat's drive vehicle function is programmed to run once every tick. Drive vehicle is mainly concerned with physics, which on its own is probably fine, but this is also where the boat's gun code resides. All of the code for the gun is therefore run every tick. Every time the gun code runs, it checks to see if you're trying to fire it, and if you are, it fires a single bullet. Just like that, you've made a gun that fires at 66 rounds per second. Or 11. Or 400. At no point does this code attempt to slow itself down. It would be very easy though. All you'd have to do is remember the last time the gun fired, and then on future ticks, check if the current time is greater or less than the time that the last bullet was fired at, plus some extra amount representing a refire rate. What's weird about this is that Valve did do this twice in this function, but for unrelated reasons. One was for periodically allowing perfectly accurate shots, and the other was for shaking the screen. 